Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., a head-on crash ends with three people dead. How police say it all happened and what witnesses say the driver was doing just before the deadly wreck. And in today's Leading SA segment, we're joined by Dr. Jason Bowling of University Health to talk about the Delta variant of the coronavirus and what it means for you. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, it is the 4th of July, so what does the weather look like? Is it gonna cooperate with your barbecues, with the fireworks displays? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Until then, good morning, eight o'clock this Sunday on Independence Day. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Any good plans today? Um, I can't think of any right now, so no. <laughs> but I know a lot of oh, people. Maybe going to Lukenbach. Luke there you go. Yeah. Good Happy food. Fourth. Happy Fourth. Yeah. What about you? Hey, well, I'm good. yeah. Ideally, he's, he's ready. We we got the the burgers, maybe some brisket. We know right. Sarah Spivey. You said you might get a brisket going today. Smoking the brisket? Oh, not me. Oh. No. She's doing the I'm making mashed, smashed, smashed potato. Smashed potato. Yeah, smashed potato oh. for a little barbecue that we're having later on today. Uh, but you know what? There are areas of rain out there right now. Some light rain reported in many areas around the city. In fact, you can see on the live camera right now, this is near the airport, a few raindrops there, and the roads are glistening from some light rain at the airport right now. 76 degrees degrees at the airport with uh, winds from the east northeast at about six miles per hour on the radar. Here we go. Here's a look at what's happening across the city. Let's go ahead and take a trip north of Highway 90 though first and talk about the hill country. Some light rain showers pushing through Kerr County, Bandera County and near uh, Canyon Lake right now. So right over the lake we're getting some light rain near Bulverde and Temperwood Park and then closer to San Antonio uh, near the Stone Oak area right now, just north of 1604. Some light rain pushing down to the south and to the east near Calaveras Lake and right on that Wilson County line. These are few and far between, but where you're not seeing light rain, you are seeing uh, areas of drizzle and we are seeing some light rain across our coastal communities as well. But big question, what will the weather look like for the rest of the day and for firework displays tonight? I've got that look ahead coming up in just a bit. Max Alicia. Thank you, Sarah. And we begin this morning with three people dead following an overnight crash. That's right. San Antonio police tell us it happened around 2.30 this morning on I-35 near 281. Witnesses at the V Lounge Bar on East Martin Street telling officers on the scene they saw a man in a white truck fire several gunshots and then take off. The driver of that vehicle and his passenger headed on the wrong side of the road before going up the McCullough exit of 35. As soon as they got to the second level of the highway, the driver in his 30s crashed into the SUV head on. He, his passenger and the victim in the other vehicle all died on the scene. And police are searching for four shooting suspects after a man was killed overnight. This was the scene in the 8700 block of Broadway near 410. Police say a confrontation happened inside the Vibrations hookah lounge and escalated to the parking lot. That's when someone pulled out a gun and shots were exchanged. Right now, we know one person was shot and pronounced dead at the scene. A second person was shot and taken to BMC Hospital. Investigators found at least 60 shell casings on the scene. And at last check, there are no suspects in custody. We're going to be following the story closely throughout the day, so be sure to stay tuned here on air and online. And another situation from overnight. Police telling us three men were stabbed after an argument between family members escalated very quickly. Police tell us just a little before 11 last night, the group was arguing somewhere in the Five Palms area. After a while, they all left, drove to a home on East Vestal. That's where two victims were found. A third victim was driven to Bamsey by a family member. And last check, he is in critical condition. Right now, police still investigating, working to figure out what exactly happened and who was going to face charges. Meanwhile, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is working to identify a body found on the far east side of the county. The person was discovered around 1 p.m. off Highway 87 near Rakowitz Road. Sheriff's deputies say the death could be related to a car crash as hours earlier. Deputies had been called to the same area for reports of a reckless driver. Deputies say the victim is most likely a pedestrian who was hit and killed. As of this morning, the driver has not been found. 
Well, obviously today is Independence Day. I want to wish you a happy 4th of July. We know a lot of people are actually going to be out of work tomorrow because that is how a lot of people are commemorating it. A lot of closures we want to tell you about. City Hall and most municipal offices closed on Monday, July 5th. Public safety and emergency services will be open. Garbage and recycling will be picked up as normal. Bus routes could also be different if you use public transportation. All regular bus routes will be following the Sunday schedule. The Go Line customer information line will be operating from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. And all information centers will be closed as well as ticket windows. If you do need to buy a ticket, you can do so. Just head to viainfo.net. And the 4th of July holiday weekend is already in full swing, and so are two DPS initiatives designed to keep you safe on Texas roadways. We're talking about Operation Crash Awareness Reduction Effort, otherwise known as CARE, and Operation Holiday. Operation Holiday is only this weekend, and it focuses on traffic violations. During last year's campaign, troopers handed out nearly 40,000 citations and warnings. Operation CARE, on the other hand, runs until Monday the 5th and specifically targets the state's move over or slow down law. That's when a, uh, a motorist, when they're approaching a stopped emergency vehicle with their flashing lights on, we ask that you slow down 20 miles per hour below the speed limit or move over to the next lane if it's safe to do so. Sergeant Moreno adds that not just for when you see first responders with their lights on, but again, also tow trucks or any anyone on the shoulder with their hazards on. Other tips you need to know about before hitting the road, plan ahead, eliminate any distractions while driving, that's your cell phone, and if you can steer it, clear it, meaning if you're in a minor accident and can still move your car off the road, do so. And finally, don't drink and drive. And if you do plan to go out, enjoy the 4th of July, a lot of stuff going on today. First up, the official celebration here in the Alamo City. It is back and it is at the Woodlawn Lake. Uh, the first event, it is free. It's set to begin at 11 a.m. It's going to have food trucks, vendors, even carnival games. The fireworks set for 9 tonight, also here in San Antonio. You can catch the fireworks at Six Flags Fiesta Texas and SeaWorld. The surrounding areas will also be celebrating in big ways. We know Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville, New Braunfels, and Schertz. Those are just some of the few cities that will light up the sky during their festivities. And we, of course, have a complete list of where everything is happening. Details, hours, all that good stuff. Just head to KSAT.com. If you've been joining us throughout the last few weeks, you've probably heard us talk about the Delta variant of the coronavirus. But as we enter this major holiday weekend, there's still a lot of questions out there. Joining us in today's leading essay segment is Dr. Jason Bowling, Director of Epidemiology for University Health. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. So we hear the term Delta variant, but what exactly does that mean? And how is it different from the other COVID that we've been fighting for the last 15 months? That's a great question. Variants are different strains of the virus that causes COVID-19. And the World Health Organization is using Greek letters for these variants or strains that are particularly important. As this virus passes from person to person, as we have more cases, the virus can get mutations. Most of them don't cause any problems, but if it gets mutations that can make it more transmissible, cause more severe disease, or decrease our ability of our vaccines or treatments to work, if it gets labeled a variant of concern. And the Delta variant is the variant that is the most transmissible at this point. It started in India, but it's spread rapidly across the globe and it's increasing rapidly here in the United States. So Dr. Bowling, how prevalent is that Delta variant here in our community and how can one even determine the difference? So clinically, when someone presents with symptoms, you can't tell the difference. It requires specialized lab testing. Fortunately, UT Health San Antonio is working with University Health uh, to sequence isolates require specialized lab testing beyond the usual diagnostic testing. And we see that we have just under 17% of the isolates that were sampled here in San Antonio or that Delta variant, which is close to what we're seeing nationally around 20 to 25%. So it's, we do see it here in San Antonio and it's increasing rapidly amongst the other strains here in San Antonio as well. And we know a lot of people are out and about this holiday weekend. So if people have gotten their vaccines, are they still safe from the Delta variant? So if you're fully vaccinated, you're still safe. The good news is there's data now on all the vaccines that are available in the United States, the Pfizer, the Moderna, the Johnson Johnson vaccine, they all protect against severe uh, disease and hospitalizations. We have great data on the Pfizer vaccine from United Kingdom where the Delta variant 
comprises 95% of their isolates, and it's 96% effective in protecting against severe disease and hospitalization. So our vaccines, fortunately, the good news for the 4th of July is the vaccines work. So we know a lot of people are going to be out and about in these public events with fireworks or just celebrating with their, with their families throughout the day. So what should they keep in mind if they're going to be out today? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the important thing to recognize is that the CDC's recommendations for relaxing some of the mask wearing are all targeted at people that are fully vaccinated. This Delta variant we've seen is so transmissible that it can infect people that are partially vaccinated, but particularly people that are unvaccinated, even if they've had infection before. So if you're not fully vaccinated, you should really consider being cautious around large gatherings and consider wearing a mask to protect yourself and others. All right, Dr. Jason Bowling, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Have a great 4th of July. You too. And if anyone missed any of that, we're going to have the full interview. Just head to KSAT.com. Time now, 810, 76 degrees out. It's a dream for some Texans. Free queso for a year. Whoa. Still ahead on GMSA, how you can win it this week. Plus, a 200-foot cliff collapsing into the water. We have a look at the amazing and terrifying sight at Lake Superior. It's summer, and making sure the Texas beach you go to is one of the clean ones. Up next, what researchers have to say about fecal bacteria levels in the water. And before we head to break, a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 76 degrees. We are celebrating Independence Day, 1776. There you go. We're going to check <laughs> in with Sarah Spivey right after the break. Good morning, welcome back and happy 4th of July. If you're headed to the beach this weekend or just headed to the beach throughout the summer, you're going to want to check on the fecal bacterium levels before you head out there. Yeah, this sounds kind of gross. A little bit. Yeah, a map <laughs> provided by the Texas General Land Office monitors the levels along the Texas coast, collecting samples and testing them for any contamination. And guess what? They found some. Mm. Even though the COVID-19 pandemic may have kept many Texans indoors last year, that actually doesn't mean the beaches got any cleaner. Wow. In fact, according to an analysis by the Environment Texas Research and Policy Center, for at least one day in 2020, 55 of the 61 Texas beaches they researched had potentially unsafe levels of this fecal bacteria. Right now on KSAT.com, we have an article that breaks down all this research. All right, so fecal matter aside, Ooh. Sarah Spivey, is yeah. it going to be a good day to head out there? I, I had a couple of people ask me, you know, if I go to North Padre Island, will it look all right? You know, the Corpus Christi area, Port Aransas area. Yeah, you know, there's a small chance, 30% for an isolated shower or storm. We actually have better rain chances here in San Antonio than they do along the coast today. Uh, now, this is look at 24-hour rainfall totals. Yesterday, we had afternoon showers and storms really scattered around the area. There were those who got rain and those who just simply didn't. Some areas that got rain northwest side of town up to two inches of radar indicated rainfall up to two inches of radar indicated rainfall along I-10 in uh, Kendall County and up to an inch in northeastern parts of Bear County kind of right near 1604 and 281 a little bit to points east and the airport officially picked up 17 hundredths of an inch of rain. Right now however we're dealing with some areas of light rain out there right now even some moderate rain in some spots. Uh, you can see that these are gradually pushing to the south and to the east, uh, attaching to the northwest flow in the upper levels of the atmosphere. We've got some moderate light to moderate rain along a bear, uh, pardon me, Bandera and Kerr County line and in Bandera and then out near Canyon Lake right over the lake right now light somewhat moderate rain in pockets out there and along 281 in Comal County. So near the Spring Branch area down to Bulverde, Timberwood Park and Stone Oak, you can see that light rain pushing to the south and to the east. So New Braunfels, you can expect some light rain here within the hour around the area. And then in Bear County itself near Stone Oak, just to the north of the airport along 281, we've got a light rain shower and near downtown, a moderate rain shower heading right into downtown San Antonio. We're going to be seeing this rain at the KSAT studios here very shortly. And then finally, across parts of Wilson County, uh, right along 181 there, uh, heading toward Floresville, some light rain this morning and along the coastal communities of Victoria and Goliad. Other than that, it's cloudy and it is very, very muggy out there. Temperatures this morning are in the uh, 70s, even near 80 degrees in Stinson in the dew points 
right there as well, so it is very humid. Let's take a look at the high rise future cast. You can see that most of that morning rain uh, should probably end close to lunch hours, and then in the afternoon we'll have scattered showers and storms popping up. Location is very difficult to nail down with a weather pattern like this. Just know that in the afternoon hours there's about a 40% chance for some scattered showers and storms. But with the sunset, we'll see our rain chances go down, and so firework displays should be all right. It's only going to get up to 90 degrees around San Antonio, but even hotter out to the west near 98 in Del Rio, mid 80s in parts of the hill country near Kerrville. So just to summarize everything for you, at 10 we'll still be dealing with patchy light rain in some areas of drizzle. Around noon we'll get a break, 30 to 40 percent chance in the afternoon, 90 for the high temperature today. East winds at 5. But what about firework displays? As I mentioned, things should look all right. Sunsets at 838 tonight. Temperatures will be in the 80s, and we do have a slim chance 20% for an isolated shower or storm, but most folks should have uh, no problem there with the firework displays. In the week ahead, tomorrow we're going to be on the east side of an upper level high pressure ridge. That gives us that northwest flow, and so tomorrow we're also going to have about a 40% chance for scattered showers and storms, especially in the afternoon. Then a trough of low pressure moves in from the Gulf of Mexico, and so Tuesday and Wednesday especially, we have a good chance for showers and storms. It, tropical in nature, so heavy downpours, few flashes of lightning, but we're not anticipating severe weather this week. But it's July. We're going to be heading into the first full week of July, and our high temperatures are only going to be at most near 90 degrees. That is impressive. Sometimes we see our first 100 degree day in the first week of July. Not going to be the case this year. Uh, I'll keep tabs on that morning light rain. It really is just a nuisancey type of rain out there. It's not really amounting to too much, and obviously there's no flashes of lightning. But if you hear lightning today, remember, what's the phrase, guys? When thunder, go. Oh, just when thunder, when thunder roars, <laughs> so close. And I was so confident. You know, I'll let you finish it. When thunder roars, go indoors. There you go. Boom! <laughs> Great job. Good teamwork. Eight twenty, seventy-six degrees out. All right, so you have a chance to win <laughs> tickets to Fiesta Texas and tons of celebrity photo ops just for being a KSAT Insider member. Just ahead, when you need to apply for the contest. Plus, helping out our local food bank when it needs us most details on the kinds of opportunities you can help with next on GMSA. All right, you feeling lucky this 4th of July? Pick three. Your numbers are 2, 5, 4, Fireball 7, Daily 4. The numbers are 4, 1, 7, 2, Fireball 4. And your cash 5, 8, 12, 20, 28, 32, Lotto, Texas, 4, 5, 11, 14, 18, 49. Big one, Powerball 26, 40, 41, 55, 65, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. Welcome back. From the need for more volunteers to free Six Flags Fiesta tickets and queso for a year, there's a lot happening here in the Alamo City, and as always, our team is covering it all. All right, let's take a look at some of the stories we are following very closely right now on KSAT.com. San Antonio Food Bank asking the community to help sign up for volunteer shifts throughout the summer. Keep up with the demand for food assistance. Opportunities range from being in the sorting room, the warehouse, garden, farm area, community kitchen, even at the off-site community kitchen at Haven for Hope. And KSAT 12 has partnered with Celebrity Fan Fest to give out 80 tickets and 20 celebrity photo op passes to KSAT Insiders. KSAT Insider is a free membership program that provides exclusive access to behind the scenes content, contest, events, and KSAT deals that also offers perks like commenting on KSAT.com, submitting photos to be used on air and online, and much, much more. The deadline to enter that contest is July 22nd. And something we've been talking about throughout the morning. If you want free queso for a year, listen up. Torchy's Tacos getting ready to open its fifth location here in San Antonio next week. If you're one of the first 100 taco junkies they are there on opening day, you can win a free limited edition t-shirt and, of course, free queso for a year. Any questions? We have all that information for all three stories right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Are you going to be first in line? No, I'll just order queso. 
Okay. That works too. <laughs> 826, 76 degrees out. Still ahead in the next half hour, a race against time for rescue crews in Surfside, Florida. We have the latest on the condo collapse. Plus, a couple of women leading several law enforcement agencies, multiple police departments on a chase around town overnight. How it all started and what happened. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. And I'm Alicia Barrera. Happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Max looks like the 4th of July. I'm right trying, now. trying to, you know, all the red, white, and blue. Someone had to, although our Sarah Spivey <laughs> went above and beyond. Let's see, can we you take have, a look? There we go, she finally put Boom. them on. Boom. There we go. Can you change the <laughs> antenna? Like, it can be like, huh? <laughs> it's pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, you know, we are dealing with some light rain out there right now, which is uh, quite literally putting a damper on some people's mornings. Uh, but the rain is very light. I mean, if you needed to get outside and maybe uh, work on that brisket that's smoking, you should be able to out there without much of a hitch, even though you might get a little bit of rain on you uh, as you're doing so. 76 degrees outside right now. The airport is reporting some light rain. In fact, a whopping one hundredth of an inch of rain fell at the airport earlier this morning. That's up from yesterday. I mean, that's down from yesterday's uh, 1700s uh, from some scattered showers and storms that we had in the area yesterday. As you can see right now, light rain is working generally southeast, very scattered in nature out there right now, isolated to scattered. Let's take a look up in parts of the hill country and north of Highway 90. Look up near Canyon Lake. You can see uh, that light rain pushing through Canyon Lake that'll be heading to New Braunfels here within the hour out near Medina. We're seeing some moderate rain actually right now in uh parts of Bandera County and uh, closer to uh, areas in uh, Bear County right now. Let me just go back to the radar. There we go. You've got some uh, good light rain near Holotus and some light rain near the SeaWorld area as well as around the Stone Oak uh, area, Hollywood Park near Johnson High School, Bracken, Selma, uh, Windcrest area, all of these areas getting some light rain. And if you're not seeing light rain, I'm sure there's some areas of patchy drizzle as well. Some moderate rain working through downtown San Antonio right now and near the Pearl as well. And then some uh, light rainfall pushing toward Floresville along 181 there and near Pleasanton and Jordanton. Now coming up in the forecast, we'll talk about how we'll receive a little bit of a break from this light rain around lunch, but in the afternoon, scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible. Uh, a lot in the nature of what we saw yesterday. So coming up, we'll talk about that. And of course, firework displays later on tonight. Alicia, Max. Thank you, Sarah. And we begin this half hour with a traffic stop that turned into a chase and ended with one woman getting tased and another now in police custody. Police say around 1130 last night near Hill Country Village, they tried pulling a vehicle over. That's police. But the two women driving sped off to Loop 1604. SAPD and the DPS helicopter quickly got involved. The driver made her way onto Topper Wayne and drove through Live Oak. That's where Live Oak police assisted and laid spikes on the streets on the street. But even after hitting the spike strip, the suspects made it to Converse, where more police had to get involved. The two women were eventually arrested at FM 1516 and ben Ben's Engelman. One suspect was tased and taken to Bamsey Hospital. The other was taken into custody. Those charges are still pending this morning. And new this morning, a teenager in critical condition after a shooting on the city's southwest side. Now, this is what we know right now. Police tell us it happened around 3 this morning in the 9200 block of Somerset Road. We're told two teenagers were hanging out outside an apartment complex when two men walked up and started shooting at them. One of the teens, a 17-year-old, shot in the stomach, taken to University Hospital at last check in critical condition. The other teen, an 18-year-old, luckily not hit by gunfire, but right now investigators working trying to figure out what exactly happened and who was responsible. And a driver is in the hospital after crashing into a Vietnamese restaurant north of downtown. It happened around 2 this morning on St. Mary's and East Russell. Police say a man was speeding before driving through a stop sign and crashing straight into the restaurant. The man was taken to Bamsey with minor injuries. Officers tell us he will be evaluated for DWI. Charges are still pending.
And in your morning headlines, the search and rescue effort in Florida has been temporarily suspended as crews prepare the remaining tower for demolition. The rest of the building could be brought down as soon as later today. It is also a race against time as Tropical Storm Elsa approaches the area. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. This morning, the Surfside Search and Rescue on pause as officials now prep to demolish what remains of the building. Structural instability and the threat of Tropical Storm Elsa convincing authorities it's safest to bring the building down in a controlled fashion. We're still very hopeful that we can do the demolition before the storm. Of course, we're also hopeful that the storm is going in another direction, but uh, we are proceeding as quickly as we possibly can. Officials say it was necessary to halt the search for now because crews have already begun drilling holes into columns. Demolitions expert Dan Hoffman says those holes will be filled with dynamite and thoroughly wrapped to try to limit debris from the blast. You're going to have it. Um, go away from the debris pile that they need to continue their recovery process. The, the risk is probably acceptable only because they're in such a rush to get the recovery process back. Rescue workers remain determined to find the 121 people still unaccounted for. On Saturday, the death toll climbing to 24, and now those who live there are being told they can't ever go back home. This is not about losing property. This is about trauma. It's about emotions. By sheer luck, Eric DeMora spent the night of the collapse at the home of his girlfriend, Fernanda Figueredo. He is grateful for that spur of the moment decision that may have saved his life, but he's now still having to leave almost everything behind. This is something that will always be with me and always going to be with yeah. us. You know, mm -hmm. no matter where we live, no matter how beautiful our homes, yeah, you know, are going to be in the future. You just don't heal from this completely. You just don't. That was Trevor Alt reporting. He referenced Tropical Storm Elsa. Now, Cuba is preparing to evacuate people along their island's southern region in fear that Elsa could unleash heavy flooding. The government opened shelters and moved to protect sugarcane and cocoa crops ahead of the storm, whose next target was, as we were just talking about, Florida. The governor of Florida declaring a state of emergency in 15 counties, including in Miami-Dade County, where that condo collapse happened. Now, Tropical Storm Elsa already battering several Caribbean islands, killing at least three people. An undersea gas pipeline in the Gulf of Mexico ruptured this week, sending flames boiling to the surface in Gulf waters. Petroleos Mexicanos said it was dispatched. It had dispatched fire control boats to pump more water over the flames. Thankfully, nobody was injured. The leak near dawn Friday happened about 150 yards from a drilling platform. Bemex, the company, said it had brought the gas leak under control about five hours later. It's unclear how much environmental damage the gas leak and oceanic fireball has caused. Now to some crazy videos caught around the country on camera. First up, the water leak in Florida, that condo collapse we talked about. Check it out. This was taken just minutes before the tower, the condo tower collapsed in Surfside. You can see water gushing out in the garage. According to CNN, the death toll now stands at 22, with 126 people still unaccounted for. And moving over to Michigan, where a group of people visiting Lake Superior were treated to an amazing but frightening sight over the weekend. That's right. Part of this 200-foot cliff collapsing right into the water. Luckily, no one was hurt. They say the collapse sent waves up that were at least 10 to 12 feet tall. Fortunately, their 100-yard distance offshore far enough from the approaching swell never got wet. The park's chief of interpretation says large collapses are rare going back to 2019 when danger struck close to kayakers along the same location between miners and Mosquito Beach. They say trails will be rerouted farther from cliffs as necessary, but not to let anyone from enjoying the landscape. And a United Airlines flight from Hawaii to New Jersey delayed by unauthorized passengers. Birds. Video from a passenger shows at least two birds flying through the cabin. That's kind of terrifying. At first, the maintenance team tried to catch the animals by opening ceiling panels. When that failed, crew members turned off the lights and asked flyers <laughs> to lower their shades. The birds then flew to the only source of light on the plane and left on their own. 
<laughs> the crowd cheered, I would too, after the extra passengers <laughs> departed and the incident only caused a 25 minute delay. Imagine trying to explain <laughs> that delay to your family. I know, I mean, and even like following the directions, I'd be like, but why? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so speaking of planes, a family traveling to Las Vegas turned their flight into a high flying seafood soiree. So they brought tons of seafood with them, broke all the food out on the plate, as you see right there, lobster. So the trip was a month ago, but a photo of the feast is now going viral. The two traveling with family had a full on seafood boil, thousands of feet in the air, catching the eyes of all the passengers, even the flight attendant, who they say snapped the photo. Oh, they was just like smiling and you know it was just a lot of positivity like people was running up taking our photos like we felt like stars never flew without my seafood every time i fly i bring seafood i never had a seafood less flight that is fancy i bring a pb and j for the past <laughs> two days many wondering how the crab legs made it past security it's a really good question they mm. say tsa lets anybody in with food oh. the prats say they plan to continue this tradition for years to come. So if you're flying to Las Vegas, maybe you'll run into them. I loved her quote. I don't fly anywhere without my seafood. <laughs> That's like some heavy duty. Lobster? They're not messing around. She's fancy. Oh, yeah. Time now, 841, 76 degrees out. All right. We know the Spurs are in the middle of the offseason, but a rising star in the silver and black could be catching the eye of Team USA. We're going to explain. All right, and after training to be an astronaut 60 years ago, one woman is finally getting the chance to go up in space. After the break, we're talking about Wally Funk and her upcoming flight with Jeff Bezos. And back here on Earth, taking a live look out at the Alamo City. It is 76 degrees out there. Fourth of July, what does the rest of the day look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. 845, welcome back. An 82-year-old woman will get her chance to finally view space after she trained to be an astronaut. Get this, 60 years ago. It's such a cool story. So Blue Origin, basically Amazon's space program, announced Wally Funk will take the fourth spot on next month's inaugural crewed flight of its new Shepard spacecraft. She will make the suborbital trip with Blue Origin's founder and former Amazon CEO. Jeff Bezos and Jeff's brother. Now Bezos posted this picture on Instagram making the announcement. Funk trained with NASA's Mercury program back in the 1960s. She didn't get the opportunity to go to space. Now she will fly as an honored guest on July 20th. So guys, if you had the chance, would you want to head to space? <clears throat> I, Alicia, would not. <laughs> I'm good here on Earth. I, I love it Sarah, here on Earth. would. We're, would. Well, I mean, yeah. that doesn't surprise me, Miss Scientist. Yeah, that's true. It'd be pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Uh, we are, how, oh, so are we going to talk about our favorite 4th of July? You know, I feel like people just want to know if they can celebrate 4th of July with the rain. <laughs> I think that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and talk about the weather. We do have some rain out there right now. This is a look at the live radar. It's mainly light rain, and in pockets there are some areas of moderate rainfall. In fact, I just looked outside of the station's uh, windows here, and I was seeing that we were getting some light to moderate rain here in downtown San Antonio and can verify that on the radar. Really only one flash of lightning out near Bastrop. The rest of this again, just your run of the mill uh, shower activity. We do have some moderate rain near Medina right now in Bandera County and right over Medina Lake. So the communities of Lake Hills uh, seeing some of that light to moderate rainfall as well. And then in Comal County near Sattler uh, Canyon Lake in Startsville, seeing some of that light rain as well. This is pushing on down to the south. So green, New Braunfels, you're going to be seeing some more light rain if you're not seeing light rain already in that area. And then in Bear County, across Bracken and Selma, that's where that uh, more moderate rain is uh, right there uh, along that Comal and Bear County line. And we're also seeing some light rain for the communities of Hollywood Park. Stone Oak already saw some moderate rain. Gray Forest and Holotus, some light to moderate rain as well. And near SeaWorld, notice how that's pushing along south along 1604 there, 290, uh, right just to the west there of uh, 1604 and through downtown San Antonio. This is the rain that I saw outside of our window here in, in uh, the KSAT 12 studios. Now, further on down to the south, Floorsville, Poth, you're going to 
get some rain as this is moving right along 181 and Jordanton and Pleasanton some light to moderate rain as well. So yes, we do have some out there. This is going to last pretty much through uh, over the next couple of hours or so. So through the late morning hours by about lunch, we should see a break from the more widespread uh, light rain. It's 76 degrees at the airport, officially about a hundredth of an inch fell at the airport this morning. That's it. Uh, 82 in Del Rio, so it is very muggy everywhere, even if you're not getting rain. 78 in Catula, 74 in Kerrville, and 77 in New Braunfels. Getting right to the forecast for today. Patchy light rain and drizzle will continue through the morning. A 20% chance for a stray shower around noon, 86 degrees. And then in the afternoon, 40% for a pop-up shower or storm. Like yesterday, but a little bit less coverage. If you do get a storm and see lightning, go ahead and have it head indoors because lightning is not safe, even though we're not expecting any severe weather today. 90 for the high temperature east winds at five miles per hour. Future cast shows those scattered showers this afternoon. They'll come to an end, though, with the loss of daytime heating, so firework displays should be OK. And then tomorrow we'll do it all over again with a 40 percent chance for scattered showers and storms it generally in the afternoon hours. So if you do have firework plans tonight to go and enjoy some fireworks, know that it's a slim chance to see some rain 20 to 30%. Uh, most of the rain will come to an end if there is any out there this afternoon uh, by sunset. So 838 PM is the sunset uh, today and it'll just be a muggy night. A lot of moisture in place, abnormally high moisture in place for this time of year in July. That's what these deep red colors are. And we're going to see more moisture in the week ahead. That'll couple with an upper level low that's going to continue to spin and give us good chances for rain all week long, but especially uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of this upcoming week. That means that in July, when we're pretty dry and we're pretty hot, this week we're going to have a chance for rain every day and highs will only at most be near 90 degrees. Wow, impressive. I just wish that we could do away with this nuisancey rain this morning for the holiday. But of course, we'll keep you informed all day long online, on air, and on KSAT.com as well as the Weather Authority app. Max and Alicia. Well, hey, at least it's not like ruining the entire right. work for the yeah, July celebration. It's just, right. you know, it's we'll a be all okay. nuisance. I'm ready for the rain to stop, though, to be honest. All right. Time to talk Spurs. Members of the U.S. national team, basketball team, they are in Vegas, or about to head to Vegas. Start of training camp set for Tuesday. The camp runs from July 6th through the 18th. And it also means the select team guys like a rising star here in San Antonio, Keldon Johnson, heading to the Sin City, knowing that their job is to train with Team USA as they get ready for the Summer Olympics this month. Remember, Keldon had a pretty good season, averaged 12 points, 12.6 points to be exact, six rebounds, 1.8 assists, only his second season with the Silver and Black. He established himself as an everyday starter for San Antonio. Of the six USA select teams, 15 select team players have gone on to represent the U.S. in Olympic play with the national team. Keldon Johnson says one day he hopes to make the national squad and play in the Olympics just like DeMar DeRozan did. He seems super excited. If you want to hear from Keldon, we have a good interview with him right now. Head to KSAT.com. Time now. Oh. You want to try out for it? Uh, I think we can make it. No, absolutely not. What? Oh my gosh, I thought something else. I've seen Alicia dunk. <laughs> Self-care is important, especially post-quarantine. Tomorrow on GMSA, we have some strategies to help you improve your physical and mental health. All right, we know a lot of people out and about this holiday weekend. A lot of travel, a lot of delays, some cancellations, as you can see on your screen right now. Ooh, right to Dallas. That flight is canceled. If you are out and about, if you've got a big trip planned, make sure to check before you head out the door. And the news you need to know before you go, police searching for four shooting suspects after a man was killed on Broadway. Now, police say a confrontation happened inside the Vibrations Lounge hookah lounge. It escalated to the parking lot gunfire exchange. One person shot and killed a second person shot and taken to Bamsey at last check. Still no suspects in custody. Light to moderate rain is moving through San Antonio metro area. We're going to see this kind of rain with us through lunch and then in the afternoon, a few pop up showers and storms. Likely that firework displays will be all right as the rain will come to an end uh, with the sunset. Woodlawn Lake, 11 a.m. There You're we go. going there? I'm uh, my, no, depending on the rain. Have a great 4th of July. Happy Thank you so much for joining us.